So with the base and rear panel assemblies complete, along with the Z-axis motors in place, we'll continue to build on this with the next steps, concentrating specifically on the heat bed assembly. Ok, so we'll start with the actual heat bed itself, which looks pretty much identical to the heat bed of the Mark IV as before it, and the Mark IV in fact. So on the top corner we have our connectors, labelled GND and VCC. It's very important we attach cables in the correct orientation here. So talking of cables, we'll need both red and black cables from the electronics and fasteners package for this next step. While both will have the same connectors on either end, we're going to use the end without the labels for this step. So starting with the black cable first, insert a single M3x10 black screw complete with an M3 washer through the hole in the connector. Note correct orientation here, unlike previous examples, the flat side of the L-shaped connector should be at the top this time round, against the screw and the washer. With that verified, Lower the black cable down onto the left GND terminal before turning the unit over and securing a single M3 nylon lock nut onto the opposite end. Use the included wrench and secure these together, but not all the way. We need to allow a little movement for adjustment later. Repeat the same with the red cable. So M3 by 10 screw complete with washer, keeping the flat side of the connector at the top and secure with an M3 lock nut onto the VCC terminal, again just loosely for now. With both in place, rotate slightly in order to form a V shape and then tighten the screws down the rest of the way to secure both into place. We'll get these protected with the bed cable cover next. Begin by inserting three nuts into the bottom of the cover, before using a screw to pull the nut in from the opposite side ensuring the nut is pulled in nice and straight. Of course, if you do use this method, remember to remove the screw once the nut is in place. And once done, place the cover underneath the two heat bed cables we just installed, taking care with orientation, and secure with a single M3 by 10 screw going in between the two power cables. With that prepared, place it to one side for the moment, and reach for the heat bed carriage located within the metal parts package and place it in front of you in this orientation, so that the flat side is facing upwards and the folds around the edges are pointing down. After which we insert 8 M3 by 4 black screws around the 8 threaded holes around the carriage. Note that we're not tightening these down just yet, just enough so that those screws just bite into the threads, leaving around 3mm gap between the screw head and the metal carriage. Since we now need to install the 8 expansion joints, found within the electronics package. These are installed by simply sliding them down over the screw heads, where the lips in the bottom of the joint slide beneath the head of the screw. Before tightening the screws down however, we need to ensure we get the orientation and position of each expansion joint correct. We'll need to use the rectangular cutout in the supplied universal wrench to do this. So starting with the side joint, hold in place with the wrench, and tighten the screw down at the same time securing the joint into position. Repeat the same on the opposite side. When it comes to the top and bottom, repeat the process, although this time keep the wrench vertical with both joints. And finally, with each of the four corners, the wrench should be held diagonally to the plate. In essence, we should be left with this, so if, for example, I were to feed a piece of string through all joints, I should be able to start at one end and travel through each joint all the way round. With that verified, we'll go ahead and attach the RGB LED strip light, although when handling, try to avoid direct contact with the resistors on the LED strip if you can. At the same time, we'll also need the cover, found in the electronics and chambers part package, and the strip diffuser from the core XY and hinges package. Ok, so with those to hand, place the heat bed carriage in this orientation, so the flat side with the corner protrusions facing you, and proceed to remove the adhesive backing from the LED strip in order to stick it around 3mm in from the flat edge. Try to get this as centred as possible at the same time, so the middle LED should sit alongside the centermost screw hole. Also note how the LED strip cable exits from the right side. When sticking, press on the blank areas of the strip, do not press down on any LEDs or components. 
Once in place, cover with the diffuser strip, taking care to note the orientation of the part here, so the edges should be angled inwards as they go up towards the carriage. And when confirmed, proceed to place a spacer at either end of the strip, covering the holes in the metal carriage. As we now need to install the LED status cover, the plastic strip comes with protective layers attached on both sides, so go ahead and remove them from either side. Before noting how one side is glossy, while the other has a matte finish. Place the cover over the LED strip glossy side facing down, so you should be looking at the matte side when in place. And secure all parts together by inserting and tightening an M3x10 black screw at either end. A nice snug fit is all that's needed. Over to the right side of the carriage then, you'll notice some small cutouts here. Insert a zip tie down and then up through each set of cutouts, making sure that the head of each zip tie faces the outer edge. Repeat across all three sets of cutouts. Before using these to secure the LED strip cable so it runs towards the back of the carriage. No need to go super tight here, we're just looking to comfortably hold the cable against the carriage. Before carefully snipping off the tails. We now need to prepare the carriage so it can sit in place on the main printer assembly, and we'll do this using the left and right bed mounts, along with a bed spacer, all found within the printed parts package. And finally, two bearings from the electronics package, supplied within small blue bags. Taking the left bed mount in hand, and with the flat side of the mount facing downwards, insert a bearing so that the bearing pushes fully into place enough so that the bearing is completely inserted and is flush with the top and bottom, before twisting and verifying the rows of balls inside the bearing are in an X shape when viewed in this orientation. Repeat the same process with the second bed mount, again ensuring the rows of balls are also in an X shape, as shown here. Once you have verified the orientation of bearings in both parts, proceed to lock them into place by inserting a single M3 nut into one side and secure with a single M3x10 screw from the opposite side, just until it's nice and snug. Repeating the same on the second mount of course. With that done, insert four M3 lock nuts into the four available locations on the flatter side of the mount, using the screw pulling technique to pull all nuts right into the mount. And repeat on the second mount too, as well as a further two M3 lock nuts into the bed spacer, and with that we have our bed mounts fully prepared. These can now be installed onto our bed carriage. So with the bed carriage placed so that the expansion joints are facing up, and the two corner protrusions facing towards you, locate the right bed mount. It will clearly have the letter R printed on it, and proceed to insert this one onto the right carriage fork in this orientation, before securing it into place using two M3x10 screws. These will secure directly to the nylon lock nuts that we inserted just underneath. Tighten until snug. Repeat the same process with the left side, again taking care with orientation, and again using two M3x10 screws to secure into position. Ok so sticking with the top side of the carriage then, place a single spacer found in your next router package covering the centre hole, before lowering the heat bed itself into place. Take care to line up the centre hole with the spacer. And double check orientation here, the two front corners should be angled as seen here, and the heat bed cables should exit the rear left corner. With that confirmed, locate an M3x12 screw, bearing in mind we're using the flathead screws for this step, and insert into the centre, and secure to the carriage. Do not over tighten just yet only enough so that the screw bites into the thread, as we want to go around and place another 8 M3x4 flathead screws all the way around the heat bed. Again we're just biting the threads at this stage, we're not actually tightening anything down at all, just getting all the screws into place for now. And with all in position, we need to tighten in a specific sequence so that the bed is as flat as possible. So go ahead and secure the centre screw, followed by the 4 side screws, and then the four corner screws, tightening all gently but firmly. With that done, we'll tidy up the rear heat bed cables next, so proceed to feed the LED light strip cable in from the bottom and through the rectangular cutout, after which we position the heat bed thermistor cable under the LED strip cable and through the channel. 
route the LED strip cable over the top through the same channel, followed by the two power cables. Next, reach for your 52mm textile sleeve from the electronics and chambers parts box and carefully wrap the top few centimetre of cables with the sleeve, pushing it into the cable channel by around a centimetre, before covering with the plastic bed cable top cover, taking care to ensure the cables are safely in the channel. And while pinching both sides together, secure with two M3 by 10 screws until snug. This will pinch the textile sleeve bundle, keeping it in place, and now making it easier to wrap the remaining cable's length into the rest of the available sleeve. With that done, we're finally ready to get the carriage installed onto the main printer assembly. So with the assembly facing you, place the bed spacer around the rear motor screw rod. Note the orientation of the part and holes as shown. The holes must be parallel to the motor screw heads. After which we can carefully feed the heat bed assembly onto the threaded rods of the Z motors, laying it down onto the base. Bear in mind we're using the empty holes up front, not the bearing. At this point I found it easier to loosely install the rear spacer to the bottom of the rear of the bed in this orientation using two M3 by 18 screws, since the spacer would then be perfectly aligned when dropping the bed down into place. Either way, note the heat bed cable bundle. It should run under the heat bed and behind the rear motor, parallel to the rear plate. With that verified, we'll need to locate three trapezoidal nuts for the next step. You'll find two nuts in the motors package and one in the electronics and fasteners parts package. Note that all nuts will need to be installed with the protruding section facing downwards and the hat to the top. With that in mind, if you did use this tip, carefully remove the two screws from the rear spacer so as to not dislodge the spacer beneath, and feed the first nut onto the rear centre threaded rod, all the way down to the bottom. Enough so that a set of holes are on either side of the rod, before securing both parts together, which should still be lined up, using M3 by 18 screws, one on either side, until nice and snug, so we're going through the nut, the heat bed carriage, and securing to the nylon lock nuts we previously inserted into the bottom of the spacer. It's a similar process up front, so feed a nut down the left threaded rod, with the hat facing upwards of course, until it lines up with the holes in the corner mount, and secure with two M3 by 18 screws. And finally, repeat the same process on the front right threaded rod too. Ok so the bed is all installed now and looking good, so we'll get the heat bed cable bundle sorted next. Concentrating on the grommet hole in the top right of the rear assembly, push the heat bed cables through, starting with the LED strip cable with the largest plug through the first hole, then the thermistor cable, and finally both power cables. And push through enough so that some of the textile sleeve goes through the hole too. Moving to the rear side then, notice how around 1cm of the textile sleeve protrudes through the hole. That's all that we require. Don't be tempted to pull more through as we need to leave ample slack on the other side. Instead, guide a zip tie through the holes just beneath the grommet and use it to capture and secure the cable bundle on the front side. Tighten until snug and snip off the tail. This will hold the cable bundle securely in place nice and neat. Ok we'll go ahead and get these cables connected up now then. Starting with the LED strip cable, guide it through the top right hole on the electronics chassis, and connect to the first slot on the right of the buddy expansion board. Next, guide the remaining power and thermistor cables through the same hole, guiding them over the board but under the open zip ties, before installing a terminal cable going through the black connector, noting the flat side of the L-shaped connector should face downwards, and secure to the left terminal slot on the electronics board. Tighten firmly, before repeating with the same red cable going into the right terminal slot. Finally, plug the heat bed thermistor connector to the slot next to the power terminals. And that's it, heat bed assembly installation complete. Well, almost. You may notice the heat bed cable assembly top cover does not sit flush with the bottom here. 
There should be no gap as this can cause issues later, particularly when using thin sheets like the satin sheet. By releasing the two screws and removing the top cover, we notice that the head of the screw here is too tall, hence not allowing the top cover to sit flush with the bottom. So remove this screw and replace it with an M3 by 10 black button head screw instead, which you will have spare in your package. After which the top cover can be replaced and secured back down, now leaving no gap. Note this error in the original Prusa online guide has now been amended. And with that, we're now complete. We have plenty of slack on the heat bed cable bundle for when the heat bed moves up and down, and the heat bed has been secured to the three Z axis motors. So, with that done, take a breather since we're now ready to move on to the largest and a more complex section of the build the Core XY assembly.